It is midday in Brussels. It's 6 p.m. in Beijing. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is World One, live from London. EU leaders have agreed on an important step forward in the fight to end the Eurozone crisis. In Brussels late on Thursday, they gave the go-ahead to plans for a single watchdog to keep an eye on all the banks in the euro currency area all 6,000 of them. At the moment, each country is supposed to keep a watch over its own banks and pick up the bill if any of them get into trouble and need rescuing. Well, that... European heads of government have come and gone since the debt crisis broke. Chancellor Merkel has been there throughout and on the subject of the banking reforms, she's advocating quality rather than speed. Well, let's take you live now to Berlin where we're joined by CNN's Fred Pleiken. So define for us what she means by quality. Well, by quality, she means that she doesn't want this new banking supervisor to be in place before... All right, Fred, thank you for that. Fred Pleiken there reporting to us live from Berlin. Well, as CNN has reported on Europe's economic crisis, we've shown you the, the human cost of austerity in the worst affected countries, such as Greece and Spain. And the UK isn't immune either. Thousands of union members are planning to march in London on Saturday against government spending cuts. Aaron McLaughlin has been talking to some of the people who are feeling the impact in their lives to find out how much reality really bites. Two nights a week, the Worth Unlimited bus rolls into Priory Court Estate. It's a rather unusual sight. Mitt Romney and President Barack Obama trading punchlines instead of insults at least for a night. With the presidential election less than three weeks away, the candidates were all smiles at a charity dinner in New York. I'm impressed with how well Governor Romney has avoided that problem. <laughs> so while the candidates called a, a sort of truce for one evening, elsewhere the campaigning continued. Obama supporters got a boost from the man they called the boss. The event with the presidential candidates was a bit of a light relief amid the battle for votes. CNN political director Mark Preston joins us now live from Washington. So, who came out tops there, Mark? Well, I got to tell you, I was watching it last night, and uh, and I wasn't sure who was going to be able to effectively deliver those jokes because not only were they. Mark, thank you very much for that. Mark Preston there for us live for us in Washington. You are watching World One live from London. Thank and Palestinians are to are about to go to the polls for the first time in six years, but not everyone is happy about it. Hamas is boycotting the municipal vote, which is being held by the U.S.-backed party Fatah. It's a political rift that threatens to split the region in two. The Fatah party controls the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, while Islamist Hamas rules the Gaza Strip. But despite the divisions, many people see the municipal council elections as a welcome chance for political expression. More than 4,500 candidates are running in 94 cities and villages. About one in four of them are women. Sarah Seidner hit the campaign trail with one of them. Maisun al Khawasmi is a fiery, passionate woman trying to blaze a new trail in the Middle East. Depend on yourself, not others. Say you're a strong woman, a decision maker. She British doctors treating the Pakistani schoolgirl who was shot in the head by the Taliban have made a statement about her condition. They say Malala Yousafzai is communicating freely in writing but she's not out of the woods yet. We're watching World One live from London. The British has been a fixture on newsstands for almost 80 years, but beginning in January, Newsweek magazine will only be available online. Well, the New Statesman is also changing tack, but in a very different way. This is the uh, print edition of the British magazine. Well, it's making its latest edition available to people in China as a PDF file in Mandarin. Why, you may ask? Well, Chinese dissident Ai Weiwei is guest editing the edition, and the magazine wants to make sure people in China also have access to it. Because of the country's internet firewalls, the vast majority haven't even heard of him. Now, the issue, this issue that's edited by Ai Weiwei, is filled with critical articles the Chinese government does not want its citizens to see. Uh, but the new statesman is hoping it can pass through with the co what's being called the so-called Great Firewall of China. Well, Helen Lewis is the deputy editor of the New Statesman. She joins us now here in the studio. Helen, thank you very much for joining us. What was the idea behind having Ai Weiwei guest edit? 
Well, we know that he's both a fantastic artist and he's somebody with an enormous amount to yeah. say and somebody who is having a lot of difficulty saying it in China. So his difficult was it to come up with an idea that you thought would be able to get through the, the numerous firewalls that are, are there when it comes to online in China? Well, we were lucky because um, I's team actually are very used to doing all this and they have you know, ways of getting it. But we knew right. that the... Well, it's very interesting indeed. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. You're watching World One, live from London, coming up. We expect to hear a lot about Russia when the U.S. presidential candidates hold their uh, final debate on Monday. Barack Obama came to office promising to reset relations with Moscow. But as Phil Black reports, that hasn't quite worked out. And some of the Kremlin say we could face a, a new Cold War if uh, Romney takes office. Well, Phil Black joins us now live from Moscow with more on that, Phil. Yeah, Manisa, the Obama administration's reset policy with Russia has delivered some achievements, but there have oh, also... Thank you. Phil Black in Moscow. British doctors treating the Pakistani schoolgirl who was shot in the head by the Taliban have made a statement about her condition and they're saying Malala Yousafzai is communicating freely in writing but she is not out of the woods yet. CNN's Atika Schubert has been following the story. She joins us now here in our studio with more on that. So this is good news. This is very good news. I mean, she was able to stand up with help. Mm. She was able to communicate, writing out sentences. So certainly goes to show that uh, any sort of uh, brain damage that was there. Well, I think she's got a lot of support from people around the world for her speedy recovery. All right, Tika, thank you very much for that. You're watching World One live from London. Lance Armstrong has had a rough week, is quite the understatement, and the sport of cycling's image has taken a massive blow as a result. Amanda Davis joins us now with details on that. Hi, Amanda. Hi, you wonder when it's going to stop for cycling. Yeah. It just gets worse and worse and worse at the moment. They've certainly got a, a rebuilding job to do. And today, Rabobank have announced that they're ending their sponsorship of professional cycling. At that. the end of... You are a Rolling Stones fan? Yeah. They're right, aren't they? Right. You can't get <laughs> if you're watching, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I am rubbish with music. I yeah. turn on the, la the radio and listen to what's there. I, I'm, I'm kind of like you in that, in that sense too. But, you but know, they're guess, legendary. You know who they yeah, are. They're legendary they're and iconic. And yeah. yes. All right. Well, stick around. You know they've been together for 50 years. Probably longer than their own marriages. Yeah. That's combined. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but they are the world's greatest rock bands. One of the world's greatest rock bands. And they are celebrating their golden anniversary. We'll be back with that. <laughs> the world's greatest rock and roll bands and after five decades the Rolling Stones show no sign of slowing down now the band plans to mark their 50-year milestone with a greatest hits album and a series of concerts CNN's Neil Curry takes a look I was born in the summer of 1962 an event of little consequence in British cultural history Neil Curry CNN London well, they're still pretty cool. The weekend is here, folks, but the outlook not very promising for most of Europe. We take you to meteorologist Mari Ramos at the World Weather Center with the down low on that. Oh, Mari. <laughs> hey, you know what, Monita? It's okay. We're going to be okay on this one. It's not going to be so bad, um, especially across uh, parts of the West where we're still going to see a little bit of a uh, rainfall. You know what? Actually, some of this rain might actually be beneficial in the weekend. <laughs> Sorry, you're going to need your umbrella. Oh, that's okay, Mara. We're oh, used to sorry. it here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that. You're watching World One live from London. I'm Monita Rajpal. Thank you for joining us. We'll update you the news headlines in just a couple of minutes right here on CNN.